Hello and welcome to a new episode of Africa Today. The IMF on the Sub-Saharan Africa's growth uh, target. The uh, cut, uh, the IMF cut Sub-Saharan Africa's growth target as oil prices declined worldwide. Details in the report. <laughs> The International Monetary Fund cut its 2015 economic growth forecast for Sub-Saharan Africa by almost one percentage point as falling oil prices curb output in the region's biggest economy. The IMF said in its World Economic Outlook update that the growth outlook in Nigeria, the continent's largest oil producer, was lowered to 4.8% from 7.3% estimated in October. Sub-Saharan Africa's economy is forecast by the IMF to expand 4.9% this year, down from a previous projection of 5.8% and grow 5.2% in 2016. Oil prices have plunged by more than half since June, curbing revenue and investment plans in Nigeria and Angola, both of which rely on crude proceeds for about 75% of government revenue. Nigeria's currency has slumped 14% against the dollar in the past six months to a record low in Lagos, the commercial capital, as foreign currency reserves slum. The IMF cut South Africa's growth forecast for this year to 2.1% from 2.3%, as falling commodity prices offset the benefit from lower oil import costs. The economy is set to expand 2.5% in 2016 in South Africa, down from an earlier estimate of 2.8%. Welcome back and uh, talking about the situation in uh, Tunisia, the trigger of the Arab Spring in the Arab world. We are joined over the phone by Ambassador Mohammed Shev, the former ambassador to Sudan. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, hello? Hello. Hello, Mr. Mohammed. Yes. Mr. Ambassador, um, how do you see now the uh, situation in uh, Tunisia, especially three years after the revolution and um, electing now a uh, new president uh, in Bijou Kaudi Sipsi. How do you see the country now? Uh, I, I think I have, you know, I have a mixed feeling about what is happening in uh, Tunisia. Uh, on the positive side, I see that uh, Tunisia has, you know, uh, passed the test of democracy in the sense that at the beginning you had one political faction, you had uh, parliamentary elections and then you had elections those who lost uh, lost gracefully and surrendered the uh, presidency to the opposition without uh, any uh, so I think this is a very positive uh, sign uh, on the positive side uh, on the negative side I, I don't feel very comfortable with electing an 88-year-old president, uh, this shows that I mean that the uh, the uh, horizon for choice is very limited. That the new generation has been uh, deprived uh, of its role, and also you know I don't feel very comfortable with electing the uh, minister of the interior of uh, the Poland regime to be uh, president of uh, Tunisia after uh, the revolution. Um, so we came through a free and fair elections as experts says, but he's also, as he said, sir, he's one of the men of Zin Labadin bin Ali's uh, regime. Um, he has been with this uh, dictator for, working with this dictator for many years, and now he's the president of Tunisia after the uh, revolution. How do you see it? Could this man give Tunisia what it needs now in this critical stage? Uh, I am not very optimistic uh, in this uh, venue. I wish uh, Tunisia all the success, uh, but I, I have my, personally have my misgivings. Uh, could he give uh, Tunisia uh, what it needs at this stage? I mean, as I said, he's an 88-year-old man. 
We are fast responding, we are fast giving uh, uh, stage. Uh, and on the other hand, as you said, he, he, he is not one of the uh, men of the previous regime. He was the minister of the interior who was responsible for uh, lots of the uh, excesses that have been uh, committed by the uh, former uh, regime. Uh, I, I, you know, I see this as a very puzzling phenomenon uh, after the Arab Spring. You know, we were all, you know, very optimistic uh, with the Arab Spring, saying that it's going to bring a new phase of democracy, new blood uh, into the Arab world. And now we see uh, in uh, Yemen, the uh, President Ali Abdullah Saleh is by proxy regaining his uh, power. Uh, we see in uh, Libya uh, the those who have been around President al are still uh, uh, gaining power. Uh, I, 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 I feel very uneasy with, with, with this. And, and how do you explain that, sir? There is a up spring in the Arab uh, region, a uh, revolution happened in many countries, and now as if something, uh, nothing happened, and they are starting again with everything uh, as old as before. Uh, I, I, I feel that, you know, that uh, nobody has given the incredible alternative to the old regimes. Uh, we have had uh, young people and uh, uh, people who are speaking philosophically with a very uh, bright and very uh, uh, normal ideas uh, without a real capability of implementing these ideas on the ground. Uh, politics is not about uh, sublime ideas alone. It is about being able to mobilize the people who are behind these noble ideas uh, in order to implement them. Uh, and this is a very big uh, challenge, especially when you have the counter-revolutionary forces uh, are still there and are still trying to make a comeback. So Revolutions, mainly when it happens in any country, it changed the whole country, it changed the regime, it changed the rules, it changed the governments, it changed the rulers, it changed everything, and people start from uh, scratch. So, you cannot call what happened in the Arab region as a revolution? It's an uprising, for example? No, 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 no. It is a revolution, and it's a very noble revolution, in the sense that the people have revolted against the, the, the tyranny, uh, and they revolted against uh, anachronism about uh, ruling uh, the Arab world in the 21st century uh, with the mentality of the 17th century. I believe very much in the Arab Spring. I believe very much in the uh, revolution. Uh, but I think the revolutionaries have been let down uh, by the political elite, by the uh, by uh, the uh, establishment. And so what is the most now uh, pressing f uh, file in front of the new president of uh, Tunisia, al Qad Sipsi? What should we start with first? Uh, personally, you know, I, I think this is not a matter of uh, uh, Tunisia alone. It is a matter of the whole of the Arab world. It is to start to, especially at his age, when he is 88, uh, he has to start immediately to uh, form a credible uh, replacement. Uh, in the sense that one of the lessons we should learn in the Arab world that due that to the fact that we have never uh, built an alternative to the totalitarian regimes we had, when these regimes fell, there was a power vacuum, nobody to replace them, and chaos. Uh